I'm writing a book. Let me read the introduction to that book, at least in its draft form. And I would welcome your feedback. Again, we're just going through the process here of writing about what will end up being 240, 250 pages, maybe 40,000 words. The plan is for this book to be published and released sometime in 2025. But I thought it might be fun for me to just read the introduction and get your feedback, see how this feels. And if you have some feedback for me, I would welcome receiving it. You can message me directly at James Swanick, uh, which is my Instagram handle. You can send me an email at james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. So here we go. The introduction to my upcoming book, The Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Is even just one drink a day holding you back? A single drink seems harmless enough. You meet a colleague after work to connect and unwind. You share a beer with a client to build rapport. You enjoy a glass of wine with your spouse at dinner. You tell yourself you deserve it, or perhaps you think nothing of it. Maybe you have a few more on the weekend at a barbecue or social event. Like almost everyone you know, you're a regular but casual drinker. You've never had a problem with alcohol. In fact, your relationship with alcohol may be something you never even questioned until recently. Cultural conditioning has led us to believe that moderate drinking is harmless and that one drink a day might even be good for us. How many times have you heard someone laugh off just one more with the explanation that, quote, studies show a glass of wine a night is good for your heart, right? We've been led to believe alcohol is a natural part of our lifestyle without ever questioning how it might make us feel. But is it really natural? Or are our socially acceptable drinking habits slowly and methodically sapping our physical, mental, financial, and spiritual potential? Is alcohol really supporting our social lives, our careers, and our happiness? Or is it merely an established, well-marketed toxin that's gradually draining our inner and outer resources? A clear-eyed look at the facts reveals that alcohol isn't just a problem for serious alcoholics or people who have a drinking problem. One seemingly innocent daily drink has physical and mental ripple effects far beyond most people's understanding. That one drink, whether it's for stress relief, networking, deal-making, social connecting, or plain old fun, has a significant impact on your health, energy, and overall well-being. And if you consider yourself a high achiever, someone who is ambitious and goal-focused, self-disciplined and driven by a strong personal I'm sorry, let me say that again, and driven by a strong personal desire to accomplish meaningful, important goals, it's important to note that even light to moderate alcohol consumption has been shown to impact productivity and performance. Entrepreneurs, executives, investors, leaders, salespeople, professional and amateur athletes, and those who consider themselves natural high performers are always looking for an edge. But if they're drinking, chances are it's holding them back to some degree in every area of their life. We're witnessing the beginning of a cultural sea change in our attitudes towards alcohol and our norms around drinking behavior. The Mad Men era of the two martini lunch is a thing of the past and bragging about your hangover doesn't land the way it used to. In fact, there is a movement now gathering speed as Americans and others around the world question the role of alcohol in their lives. According to Nielsen data, nearly half of Americans are actively attempting to cut back on drinking. Dry January, as in ditching alcohol in the first month of the year, has been growing in popularity. Non-alcoholic bars are opening up in hip corners of Brooklyn, London, and Los Angeles. Sales of non-alcoholic beer, wine, and cocktails have skyrocketed with dozens of new brands popping up to meet the demand of the consumer. The alcohol alternative beverage market exploded during the pandemic lockdown and is now expected to exceed $29 billion by 2026. Even Budweiser has jumped on the bandwagon, debuting an alcohol-free beer, Budweiser Zero, in July of 2020. Some of the world's most successful people have made the conscious choice to embrace the alcohol-free lifestyle, including billionaires like Warren Be like excuse me, including billionaires like Warren Buffett, Michael Dell, and Larry Ellison, business leaders like Ariana Huffington and 
Tom Shoes founder Blake McCoskey, thought leaders like Tony Robbins and Brene Brown, who calls living alcohol-free her superpower, and Hollywood stars like Bradley Cooper, Natalie Portman, Pharrell Williams, and Jennifer Lopez. The simple truth is that alcohol is toxic to our system, and we take a little hit with every drink we consume. By the time we're in our 40s, if not earlier, our bodies and minds begin to reflect the cumulative effect. I often say that it's difficult to fully appreciate how damaging alcohol... Let me start this sentence again. I often say that it's difficult to fully appreciate how damaging alcohol is because it's a death by a thousand cuts. It's an invisible gradual deterioration, an energy faucet slowly leaking until suddenly you're tired all the time, you're gaining weight, you're losing focus and motivation and leaving your potential on the table. There's a snowball effect that over the years adds up to huge losses in performance, success, business revenue, personal income, happiness, and fulfillment. For professional high performers, these losses can be especially detrimental and discouraging. If you run your own business, drinking alcohol might translate into not closing a deal because you're too foggy and lethargic. On a more subtle level, those extra five to 10 pounds might leave you feeling just a little less confident. You lose your edge. Customers and potential clients go elsewhere because you weren't at the top of your game. My defining moment came on March 11, 2010. I was 34. I awoke in my Austin, Texas hotel room with a small hangover after a night or two of gin and tonics at a South by Southwest festival party. I looked in the mirror, noticed the bags under my eyes and the fat rolls hanging over my briefs, and I tasted my dry mouth. It wasn't rock bottom, but in that moment, I felt the mediocrity of my life. I was stuck in a drift heading in the direction of average. I was leaving my potential on the table. I walked next door to an IHOP for a hangover breakfast. The sight of those scrambled eggs and bacon on the colorful laminated menu and people around me scarfing down all you can eat pancakes made my hangover feel all the worse. I looked out the window and had one of those unremarkable but life-changing moments of clarity. This wasn't how I wanted to be living my life. I'd had enough of feeling average, of being average. Right then and there, I resolved to give up alcohol for 30 days. It was a personal challenge to test my self-discipline and see if I could make it through. When I started that 30-day challenge, I had no idea it would become a new lifestyle. The first week felt challenging at times, but not nearly as much as I feared. I noticed I was a little more irritable, I tossed and turned slightly more during the night, but I certainly didn't experience dramatic withdrawal symptoms, including migraines or sweats, that I'd been culturally conditioned to fear. The more challenging part of that first week was actually the social element. It initially felt awkward turning up to a bar or restaurant and ordering a soda water because I feared interrogation from friends. I was surprised that some people didn't even notice and others didn't seem to care. Those who did jokingly gave me a hard time. I got a lot of quips like, you're so un-Australian. I just smiled and laughed with them. By, wi <clears throat> excuse me. By week two, I started feeling better, sleeping more deeply and noticing more mental clarity. After the first 30 days, I was healthier. I'd lost 13 pounds. My skin was clearing and I had more money in the bank. All that cash I'd saved from not drinking. I even started waking up early to work out. The positive changes were encouraging enough that I decided to keep going and see where it would take me. Around the 60 day mark, I occasionally craved a glass of red wine with dinner or a Bombay Sapphire and tonic at the end of the workday. When it was hot outside, I couldn't help but think, oh gee, I could smash a cold beer right now. But I trained myself to breathe deeply, down a tall glass of water, and simply allow the feeling to pass. And it did pass. After three months, I turned the corner and was developing power over alcohol. I felt terrific. I had a natural energy I hadn't known since I was much younger. I was getting compliments on my improved looks. And despite not drinking, I still managed to have wildly entertaining nights out, even with friends and colleagues drinking heavily around me. Back then, I was single. 
To my surprise, my dating life actually improved without the booze. My conversations with women became much more meaningful and my dates were impressed by my self-discipline and commitment to my health. By month six, I was in the zone. I was generating a consistent seven to eight hours of good sleep a night as my body embedded its natural circadian rhythm. I could go out with people drinking around me and still have fun, or I could stay in and not even think about alcohol. I was up early in the morning to exercise, shower and have breakfast, and I was ready to tackle the day by the time friends and colleagues were slowly waking up from a night of after work cocktails and disrupted sleep. By the time I approached a year without alcohol, I noticed the dramatic and lasting changes that would truly reshape my life. My relationships with family, romantic partners, colleagues and clients were, consider were considerably improved. I thought more about how I could help others than how they could help me. I was more relaxed and made better decisions. My productivity soared and new opportunities came my way, including becoming an anchor on ESPN Sports Center and finding a personal mentor in entrepreneurship. Clear in body and mind, I had the energy, discipline and motivation to excel at ESPN and then to start two businesses of my own. When I reached the milestone of one year without drinking, I found myself at a pub. Let me start that again. When I reached the milestone of one year without drinking, I found myself at a pub in Austin during the next year's South by Southwest Festival. To celebrate a year of alcohol-free living, I did something counterintuitive. I ordered, a Bud I ordered a Budweiser in a pub and put it to my mouth. It smelled good. I had every intention of drinking that beer, but something stopped me. I paused for a minute and considered how my life had transformed. The pros of an alcohol-free life far outweighed the cons of an alcohol-filled life. I put the Budweiser down and I haven't so much as picked up a drink since. Not drinking transformed me, personally and professionally, and it will transform you too. I invite you to consider an alcohol-free lifestyle as your new business strategy, one that allows you to harness the full force of your energy and focus on delivering real and meaningful results. If you reclaim the energy you currently direct towards drinking, how would the most important aspects of your life, the four buckets of health, wealth, love, and happiness transform? The alcohol-free lifestyle is the blueprint for the high performer who knows or suspects that alcohol isn't supporting their ability to live, work, and create at their highest capacity. This includes small business owners, multi-million dollar entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives, mid-tier professionals, career-focused employees, creatives, and athletes. It's for the natural high performer who knows they want to change their relationship with alcohol or might be curious to try but aren't sure where to start. In part one of this book will challenge your beliefs around alcohol and help you rewrite the story you've been telling yourself about drinking. In part two, we'll break down the facts about how alcohol, even in small amounts, can negatively impact your health, performance, success, and happiness. And in turn, how giving it up naturally and effortlessly will enhance each of these areas of your life. In part three, you'll find a guide to doing your own 90-day no-alcohol process and for turning those 90 days into lasting lifestyle change. This one change has been the secret weapon of countless peak performers who strive to unlock their potential. I've seen my clients make more money, have more fun, feel more at ease, and tell me that they love their life more when alcohol is no longer a part of it. Now it's your turn. And then the book will go on from there. So I'll just pause there. That is uh, the introduction of the book, which is called The Alcohol-Free Lifestyle, A High Performer's Guide to Upgrading Your Energy Output Health and Happiness by Quitting Alcohol, and in brackets, for good. What do you think about that? I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email, james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. You can contact me at Instagram at at, at James Swanick. Uh, if you're watching part of this on my video, you can leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to receive your feedback.